uh, we have quite a few people from around Australia and New Zealand at this fantastic workshop, this fantastic webinar, it will be a fantastic webinar, uh, that Jessica Gauchy is uh, presenting for us. Jess is a teacher in New South Wales and uh, we're looking forward to hearing her talk about the topic designing for community engagement. And uh, we want to welcome not just the people who are with us at the moment, but we also want to welcome all the people who are watching the recording. And we're getting an average of about 130 to 200 people on average watching the recordings of these uh, from around the world. Obviously, this is not a great time in the Northern Hemisphere. I think it's um, one o'clock in the morning or something like that in, in San Francisco at the moment. So we've aimed these particular sessions to be more focused for APAC teachers. Uh, and it's a much more suitable time for them. So welcome everyone, and uh, we keep welcoming more people. Just a little reminder when you are uh, putting your names in, don't, don't just type in guest, make sure you actually have your name. And if you can, use the chat pod to tell us where you're from, just give us a bit of a background of where you're at. So I'm just gonna jump. do some promotion promote out and get you guys to promote out to everyone else. The first one is the Adobe Education Exchange. Obviously that is a really important portal for us. We've now uh, well over 200,000 teachers. In fact, I took that screen grab earlier this afternoon, 213,393 members as of a few hours ago. And uh, it's, our, it's our main portal, it's our main link um, from, from Adobe to educators all over the world. And you guys are probably already members, which is terrific. This is why you found out about this particular event, and you're probably already involved in our professional learning programs. But let me encourage you to talk to your colleagues and to share the value of the Adobe Education Exchange out as widely as you possibly can. Uh, it's not just for arts teachers either. There's, there's so many resources for all areas of, of the curriculum. So keep promoting the Adobe Education Exchange. Um, my personal target is to get, I think, I think I might target about 12,000 educators from just this part of the world uh, by the end of the year, and I'm getting close to that, um, but we've still got a way to go. The Adobe PD catalogue is something to keep note. This, this gets updated once a month by Pip Cleaves, and I want to thank Pip again for, for uh, being involved in that. And uh, the June edition is there and it's out and it kind of uh, categorises all the different professional learning that's available through the Adobe Education Exchange and it has the Sydney time listed on each event too so that you can keep a track. It's a little bit easier to work out the timing of your areas based on Sydney time than it is based on um, San Francisco time or uh, Los Angeles time. So uh, use that, there's the URL there, Adobe PD catalogue. Um, for those people who, uh, who who want to promote how to use Adobe products to people who are not teachers, so students, parents, anyone else basically, the helpx.adobe.com resource is really worth promoting. It has, it's like a one-stop shop for any help with any of our products at all, from beginner's classes to full-on master classes. And if you click on that little all products button, you'll see there's over a hundred bits of software there that we're currently promoting and supporting. Um, out of the almost 300 applications that Adobe has had over the time, over the period, uh, I'll keep reminding people it's not just about Photoshop these days. So um, if you want to find out a bit more about Illustrator, a bit more about what Jess is presenting today, then go into this and find out uh, some of the tutorials that are available. The next live event is Henrietta Miller, also from New South Wales. I went and visited her school only about three weeks ago and it was terrific to go and see her in action at her school and, and uh, meet some of her students. Wednesday the 29th of July, I encourage you to join this live event, Building PDF Portfolios to Share Student Work. Henrietta is a primary school teacher, so it will be focused on um, primary schools, but PDF Portfolio is relevant to all teachers, even higher education teachers as well, so there will be value there. So please share that out to your colleagues, particularly the primary school teaching colleagues. The Adobe Campus Leader Program is something to uh, be aware of and to make sure that uh, if you know someone at your school who you think would be of value to this program and the value to them. Uh, someone like Jessica Gauchy who joined this program earlier this year and she's doing a fantastic job as an Adobe Campus Leader. Then that's the URL to apply to become an Adobe Campus Leader. Feel free to promote that out as well. And that's how we will be growing our Adobe Education Leader program to uh, sort of this is a pathway to becoming an Adobe Education Leader down the track. And finally, these are the other live events that we've got happening until August. 
So we've got using Adobe in the Visual Arts Classroom on the 13th of August, New Old School Animation on the 26th of August, and Captivate Basics on the 31st of August. All of these sessions are at 6 o'clock p.m. Uh, Sydney, Melbourne, Lisbon time, 4 p.m. Perth time, 8 p.m. Auckland time, uh, 1 a.m. San Francisco time. So these ones are all very much focused on educators in the Asia Pacific. All right, that's enough from me. We're going to jump straight to Jess now, who's going to do her presentation. Over to you, Jess, if you can start sharing your screen. Okay, thank you, Tim. Feel free to disable camera now too, Jess, so that we've got a bit more bandwidth to work with. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. Hi everyone, thank you very much for joining this avow. This is my first time running an online live with me. Uh, it's nice to see you see a variety of um, subjects being taught and people on here who teach a variety of subjects, so welcome. My event is titled Designing for Community Engagement. And basically I'm really passionate in in teaching teaching uh, content that connects students to the real world and uh, life experiences, whether it's for their career or whether it's for their community. So this session will provide you with ideas on how you can use Adobe software to develop projects with secondary students that allow for engagement with the community. Uh, I have also made this presentation available in a PDF format with interactive links where I have embedded resources, web links uh, that you can just click on in the PDF document and you can just use it at your own um, disposal, I guess. Okay. Uh, so you can contact me through a variety of ways, through Twitter, the Education Exchange, LinkedIn, Weebly. That uh, site is in progress, so it's not perfect at the moment. Pinterest and my website and also my email. Okay, so this session is short, so I'm only providing you with ways on how you can use Adobe software in your teaching to create engaging learning experiences. I will be focusing on three specific examples of projects that I have actually run in my community. So I am going to show you ways to create stencil art and graphics in Illustrator for school or community speed up projects. Uh, I will briefly mention how you can use Photoshop and other programs to edit and manipulate photographs for school and community uh, exhibitions and festivals. And also, how do you create graphics uh, such as logo designs for business cards and other marketing material for local businesses using Adobe Illustrator? For any of these projects, I suggest that you contact your local council for permission, especially for the seed art and graphics uh, projects. Uh, you can see if there are any toilet blocks, walls that are being vandalized in the area that need to be covered up. Um, you could also contact the local paper to have articles written up about projects that you are doing in your classroom that do connect with the community. Um, and you can contact local artists and professional artists, designers and photographers to come into your classes to teach students uh, industry skills that they can then use out in the community. I try and focus all of my projects to connect with and have some relevance to my students' world their community, their life, their future career aspiration. Basically, in doing that, kids seem to be more engaged in what they're learning and I have fewer, I have less discipline issues when they can see relevance to what they're teaching. I'm going to start with the first project. So I contacted my local council, which is Wollandilly Council. I contacted them last year about an idea I had to have a, to have my students put their their stencil speed art projects out into the community. So I basically contacted them to see if there were any walls available for us to spray their stencils. They were really excited about this project, so they gave me a local toilet block that was getting vandalised by our very own school students. So they gave us the toilet block, they also supplied us with the paint, uh, and then I took my Year 10 art class out for a speed art project for an excursion and they sprayed their stencils that they created inside of my classroom out on the local toilet block. They also created a group mural which had a, uh, which was quite effective and it looks great from the street. So here are some examples of the, the stencils that they created. They weren't perfect but it was more the fact that they were going out and spray painting their artworks on walls 
they seem relevant in what they were learning inside of the classroom and how it could connect to their community and the real world. Uh, this was another project that I did with Wollandilly Council. So after the first project, they then gave me another toilet block in Warragamba to spray paint and to create a group mural. mural. I gave council a design that I created in Adobe Illustrator first so they could look at it, approve it, approve the plan and then they, they went out and gave me uh, the paint and we went out and spray painted our stencils and created the group mural. Uh, okay, so in creating the stencil art, there are different options to have students create the vector in Adobe Illustrator. They can, it depends on how complex you want this activity to be. If you want it to be a basic activity, you can get them to use the image trace function. You could get them to use the text and shape tools. Um, if you want it to be a more complex activity, you can have them use the pen tool, uh, or they can use the amazing app, the Adobe Shape app, where they can take a photo of an object and then they can turn it into a vector and it will be available in their assets in the Adobe Cloud or they could go online and download some free vector. So again, it depends on how complex you want this activity to be. Uh, the, the more complex ones would be great, uh, it just depends on how much time you have. Some topics to discuss through this activity is the use of positive and negative space, design and composition, the difference between street art and graffiti and vandalism, safety procedures using sharp cutting tools, and I would suggest you contacting the council or a local police command to speak to the class about the difference between street art and graffiti. Uh, it just gives, that, gives the activity more relevance to the world and their community. Okay, so with the stencil activity, once the design has been finalised in Adobe Illustrator, then what the kids can do is they print it onto A4 or A3 paper, place an overhead transparency sheet over the design, trace the design using a black marker considering positive and negative space, and areas that will be cut, uh, sorry, discuss areas that will be cut and areas that won't be cut, use the scalpel and then place onto wall and spray paint. Uh, you, can, you can also download the Adobe Shape app through the App Store. Okay. Um, I will show you at the end of that how to use a few of the different functions that I've listed here to create vector, but I will move on to the next project. This project though that I did do with the kids, it was very exciting for the kids. They really enjoyed the process and they did see relevance in what they were learning inside of the art classroom and how art could connect to the community in the real world. Extending on that project, we then went around the school and we, we updated some classrooms with some murals and feature walls. So again, designing the graphics initially in Adobe Illustrator is a really great way for you to visualize the design, but also to get permission by the principal or the local community, the council, to put these ideas out there. Schoolyard and art, sorry, schoolyard art and graphics. So just applying those designs that you come up with in Illustrator onto walls, just to enhance some really dark, outdated spaces and to give the school a little bit more life creating some classroom graphics and wall stickers. Uh, so designing the graphics in Illustrator, you can then uh, print them out through various suppliers as wall stickers, vinyl wraps, or you could also paint them as murals. Using blackboard and whiteboard paint is a really fantastic way to allow the kids to engage with their actual classroom, to turn the classroom into a resource of its own, um, to create interdisciplinary learning experiences, um, and also just to, yeah, just to create more interesting learning experiences. The next, uh, the next project was a community art festival where I again contacted my local council and I, I contacted them with an idea to have the students work with professional artists to develop content for a festival that, that took place in Picton in 2015 called Illuminat. So we had professional digital artists come into the classes and teach kids how to manipulate content, design content and digital map content on objects, shapes and buildings using various software. Um, this festival that took place in the community really connected the community. Uh, it brought a lot of people out on the night. Uh, the kids got to see their work on display um, and it was, a, it was a really great opportunity. 
The students photographs were taken during the workshops with the professional artists and those, uh, those images were displayed on trees and the kids got to see their faces up on these trees and they got to see their uh, content out in the community which was fantastic. The next, uh, the next project that I am actually currently working on is with my Year 11 Photography and Digital Imaging class. So I wanted to introduce these kids to Adobe Illustrator. I wanted them to learn graphic design. So what I got them to do was I got them to research some local businesses in the area. Being a small country town, a lot of these businesses haven't updated their graphics, their logos, their advertising material for a really long time. Um, so the, the students had choice in which business they chose to redesign their logo for. Um, they worked through a series of logo design tasks and they came up with a final logo that uh, was used for that business. Now the business didn't have to use the logo if they didn't want to, however it gave the students an opportunity to feel like their work, what they were learning inside of the classroom was relevant to the real world. So what I had the students do was research a variety of, of businesses first. Um, I trained students a variety of logo designs and we talked about the purpose of a logo. I had students evaluate two logos that they found discussing positive qualities of each and any improvements that they think could have been made. So the first two activities was based around a badge style logo, so you can see in the top right hand corner, and the second logo was a clipping mask logo. I will demonstrate this in a moment. Uh, we discussed vector and the difference between vector and pixels as well as the difference between Photoshop and Illustrator. There's a really good video available to introduce students to Adobe Illustrator. So this is available in the, in the um, resource that I have for you on the Adobe Education Exchange. You can actually click into it and it will take you directly to that video. But I basically, I put that on before we opened Adobe Illustrator and it gave them a really good overview. So students then went on to create some logos. So they, they chose a logo off the internet. We looked up what worked in the logo, what didn't work. Then they recreated those logos using the tools in Adobe Illustrator. We looked at the shape tool, we looked at the text tool, um, we looked at how to create vector, how to download vector off the internet, um, and all different ways on creating vector, working with colors uh, and text. So these are just some examples. We also used photographs in Illustrator and used the clipping mask tool. So these are the results of some of their work. Okay, so once the students chose their local business that needed new graphics, they designed the logo. So here we have an example of Timeless Treasures Gifts and Decor, and then we have an example of their new logo that had been created, uh, a business card, and a flyer, and also a product label. So other ideas, so other than designing uh, a logo, they could design the business cards, the flyers, product labels, they can design banners, posters, websites, apps, marketing videos, promotional DVDs, Facebook pages. Basically, whatever that business needs to get updated, and again, they don't have to use the designs obviously, but it's a really good way to have students feel like their learning is being relevant. I'm now going to jump into the Illustrator, so bear with me for a second. Okay, so when you're working with Illustrator, now some people probably have really good skills already. For those who are too sure of, of using Adobe Illustrator, there are various ways to create vector. So there's the image trace function, which is quite complicated. There are, as I mentioned, you can use, sorry, that was meant to be Adobe Save app, or uh, download content online. So what I got the students to do was set up a new page. So file new. I set up four artboards so they can have a range of designs. Four and landscape. So here we're starting to design a logo. So I gave students an overview of the Illustrator workspace and the tool, uh, the different windows available, and then we got started. So Using a text tool, so I'm first going to zoom in on my artboard. Using the text tool, 
Okay, opening up my character to make the size of the text a little bit bigger. Okay, just going to write logo. So I showed the students how to write, how to type, how to change the font, how to change the size. Uh, I showed them how to change the size or by using it as a bounding box, holding shift and dragging it out. Okay, so it's up to what they wanted to create, but we did start with a vector. So for this example, I downloaded the vector of the outside circle on the internet. Um, so what I'll do is I'll make a copy of that. We then use the We then use the color palette, the move tool. We then do another circle. So I got to show them how to draw shapes with the shape tool, how to align these shapes, and use the selection tool. So selection tool, align. Okay, I'm going to draw another circle. So I basically gave them this activity for so could experiment with all the different shapes they could create and how to then align them up and to introduce text so using the text tool color of that uh, also ordering so we looked at how to arrange each element on our page how to create stars using the text tool. Okay, and then moving them around. They could recolor them. Uh, and then using the, uh, the center a little bit more. Okay, and then I showed them how to extend on the shape tool and the text tool and create a type on a path. So you need to do for that, create a shape, hold down the text tool, type on a path, click on the path of the shape you've created. So I'm going to just write by Jessica. Out here. Now as you can see this needs to be flipped, so I'm going to highlight that text. Then I'm going to go into type on a pop and flip that around. It's okay. I'm going to change that to white and I'm going to reduce the size of that. So basically spending a whole lesson on creating a badge logo and then spending a lesson on using a clipping mask. So I'll show you the clipping mask tool. Importing a picture, so file place. Placing that over the area that you would like the design to go. Putting that backwards. and then selecting all of the elements in that, right-clicking and making a clipping mask. Okay, you can't see the, the design part there, so I'm going to put a black box behind it, or I could just... Sorry, that's my mistake. It didn't work because I didn't actually have it over that. We'll go back a bit. File place. Put the design over everything, send it underneath, and making the cookie mark again. Okay, now you might want to choose a better design feature as that. That color probably wasn't the best. Okay, but basically I went through a range of, of ways to create logos, and then they chose which style they liked according to the business. 
I had the students view the businesses that they would like to uh, work with, um, and then they decided what other marketing tool they would need, whether it was a website, whether it, it was a really good way to have students in their class with local businesses um, and see the relevance for their work. Uh, Tim, are there any questions at this point? Do you find that when you're teaching? And, uh, we'll just go through. Yeah, I'll go through them from the top. The first question was from Karen McFarlane. Do these activities form part of your students' assessment? Yes, they do, yes. So I write these and in what way? my program prior to teaching them. And uh, she asked Sorry. a question when you were talking about some of the artwork from outside in the community. So um, yep. just, just wondering about how you, how you use that as part of your assessment. Uh, so the street art workshop with council. Is that the question Correct. there? Yep. Okay. Um, yep. Basically, I my the topic that I wanted to teach was street art, and I then contacted council before I taught the unit to say this is what I'm doing with my students. Would there be any putting these artworks in the community? Uh, then they came back to me saying, yes, we'd like to do that, and we, they basically, I was lucky enough that they had a wall available, available for me to do that. Um, and then the project, and I, I put that into my evaluation of my program, and The next question was, what year levels are those tasks aimed at? Okay. Hi everyone, thank you very much for joining this event. Uh, this is my first time running an online live event with Adobe, so please bear with me. Uh, it's really nice to see you see a variety of um, subjects being taught it's and people on who are providing subjects, so like welcome. That some my event is titled Designing for Community Engagement. For um, basically, I'm really Adobe passionate in, in teaching, teaching uh, content that connects students to the real world and uh, life experiences, whether it's for their career or whether it's for their community. So this session will provide you with ideas on how you can use Adobe software to develop projects with secondary students that allow for engagement with the community. I also made this presentation last year about an idea I had to have, a, to have my students put their, their central street art projects out into the community. So I basically contacted them to see if there were any walls available for us to spray their stencils. They were really excited about this project, so they gave me a local toilet block that was getting vandalised by our very own school students. So they gave us the toilet right. block, they Couple also supplied us with the paint, yes. uh, uh, and then I took my U10 art class out for just, a street art uh, project for an excursion, and they sprayed their stencils that they created inside of my classroom out on the local toilet block. Um, they also the created a group mural which, had a, uh, which was quite effective and, and it looked great on the street. So here are some examples of the, of the, the stencils that they created. They weren't perfect, but it was more the fact that they were going out and spray painting their artworks on walls. They seen relevance in what they were learning inside of the classroom and how it could connect to their community and the real world. Uh, this was another project that I did with Wollongilly Council. So after the first project, they then gave me another toilet block in Warragamba to spray paint and to create a group mural. I gave Council a design that I created in Adobe Illustrator first so they could look at it, approve it, approve the plan, and then they, they went out and gave me uh, the paint and we went out and spray painted our stencils and created the group mural. Uh, okay, so in creating the stencil art, there are different options to have students create the vector in Adobe Illustrator. They can, it depends on how complex you want this activity to be. If you want it to be a basic activity, you can get them to use the image trace function. You could get them to use the text and shape tools. Um, if you want it to be a more complex activity, and, uh, you can have them use the pen tool, or they can use the, a a uh, they can use the amazing app, the Adobe Shape app, where they can take a photo of an object and then they can turn it into a vector, 
Some and it will be available in their assets uh, and the Adobe Cloud. Or they could go online and download some free vector. Um, so sure again, it depends on yeah, how complex you want fine. these activities to be. The more complex the ones you do, uh, it just depends on how much time you have. Ben, some topics to discuss through this activity is the use of positive and negative space, design and composition, the difference between street art and graffiti and vandalism, safety procedures using sharp cutting tools, and I would suggest you contacting the council or a local police command to speak to the class about the difference between street art and graffiti. Uh, it just gives, that, it gives the activity more relevance to the world and their community. Okay, so with the stencil activity, once the design has been finalised in Adobe Illustrator, then what the kids can do is they print it onto A4 or A3 paper, place an overhead transparency sheet over the design, trace the design using a black marker considering positive and negative space, and areas that will be cut, uh, sorry, discuss areas that will be cut and areas that won't be cut, use the scalpel and then place onto wall and spray paint. Uh, you, can, you can also download the Adobe Shape app through the App Store. Okay. Um, I will show you at the end of that how to use a few of the different functions That's that I've listed here uh, to create vector, but I will move on to the next project. To this project, though, that I did do with the kids, it was very exciting for the kids. They really enjoyed the process and they did see relevance in what they were learning inside of the art classroom and how art could connect to the community in the real world. Mentoring for kids Extending on that project, that we then went around the school and we, we updated some classrooms with some murals and feature walls. So again, designing the graphics initially in Adobe Illustrator is a really great way for you to visualize the design, but also to get permission by the principal or the local community, the council, to put these ideas out there. Schoolyard and art, sorry, schoolyard art and graphics. So just applying those designs that you come up with in Illustrator onto the wall, yeah, just to enhance the really dark, outdated spaces and to give the school a little bit more minutes. life. So Jeff, was there anything else you wanted to cover? Creating some to classroom cover graphics in, in and wall stickers. Seconds, maybe just to uh, so off, designing the graphics in Illustrator. You can then uh, print them out through various suppliers as wall stickers, vinyl wraps, or you could also paint them as murals. Using blackboard and whiteboard paint is a really fantastic way to allow the kids to engage with their actual classroom, to turn the classroom into a resource of its own, um, to create interdisciplinary learning experiences. Um, and also just to yeah just to create more interesting learning experiences. The next uh, the next project was a community art festival where I again contacted my local council and I I contacted them with an idea to have the students work with professional artists to develop content for a festival that that took place in Picton in Southern Texas called really Illuminar. So we have professional digital uh, artists coming to the classes and teach kids how to manipulate content, so, uh, design so content, for, and for, uh, digital map content on and, objects, uh, shapes, and buildings been watching using their software. And, uh, um, this festival that took place in the community and, really connected uh, the community. The uh, brought to a lot of people out on the night. Uh, the kids got to see their work on display, the um, and it was, a, it was a really great opportunity. I'm going to stop the recording now. Students' so photographs were taken during the workshop for the professional artists, and those images were displayed on trees. And the kids got to see their faces up on these trees, and they got to see their content out in the community, which was fantastic. The next, the next project that I am actually currently working on is with my Year 11 Photography and Digital Imaging class. So I wanted to introduce these. Thank to you again, Adobe Illustrator. I wanted them to learn graphic design, 